Well, hello everyone. This is Ron, and I'm back with you with another episode of Empire Coins and Collectibles. And today's episode is uh, again continuing that little motif we've had on collecting silver that is not necessarily coins, not necessarily tokens, but moments frozen in history. But before we get back to that, if you could please like, share, and subscribe, uh, that would make Miss Empire, she's around here somewhere. She's always looking over my shoulder. That would make her very, very happy. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I, I really do enjoy collecting and stacking silver. Silver uh, in silver eagles, silver sovereigns, like uh, the Canadian coins, the British coins. But more especially, I do enjoy the private mint issues. And not just in coins or bars, but in something that is recognizing a part of our American history. And uh, many of you may not be familiar with today's topic. Uh, we're going to talk about something that is on my bucket list, and it is a significant piece of history in the United States. Also, Miss uh, Empire is going to share some things with you when we reach our 1,000 subscriber. And we're kind of creeping along. We've hit a little lull. Maybe you can help us overcome that and uh, help us reach that 1,000 milestone. And then we're going to have a drawing for some, a slab coin and some other giveaways. And with that, my friends, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to change the camera. And then we're going to look and see what's on the tray here. So hang with me. This takes me a second. And hopefully you can see this. Um, before we actually go there, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. There we go. So what are you looking at here? This road that starts from Chicago and meanders through Illinois, Missouri, and unfortunately just skips past Arkansas, bypasses it, goes into Oklahoma, into the panhandle of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and goes into California. So what's significant about that? Well, there's several things that you may or may not know about Route 66. And that's today's topic for our episode. Route 66 was one of the first highways built to connect the east and west part of the United States. Before then, it was small rural roads that would take you forever. And typically, the best place to go from way to go from east to west would be by ship, perhaps, and by uh, airplane. But I don't think the airlines had really lifted off in any big way until maybe the 30s going into the 40s. So there really was some isolation between the East and West. But when Route 66 was built, a lot of traffic went up and down that highway uh, going from Chicago into California. And actually, it was established and built in 1926. It became, of course, one of the most famous roads shortly thereafter when it was opened up. But it became even more famous in the 40s and the 60s. And I'll share that with you in just a moment. So it started again in Illinois, Chicago, one of the major cities in the United States at that time, still is, and went all the way west into Santa Monica, California. Uh, that would be in the Los Angeles County area. And so if you wanted to go to California, you typically went to California via the Route 66. So it's pretty significant. Uh, actually, it covered 2,448 miles, 2,448 miles. That's a long journey. Uh, I've gone back and forth to Florida from Texas. I've gone north a bit, but I have not driven out to California. And of course, Texas is not Illinois. So that would be a shorter trip, but still a long trip for me from Texas. But in any case, it has a lot of history. One of the things that uh, made it famous in the 1940s, is 1946, there was a song that came out 
the song's real name was Route 66, but everybody became uh, uh, it became known to everybody by Get Your Kicks on Route 66. Now, if that's not a clickbait, was it a clickbait back then? I don't know. That's if that's not an advertisement, I don't know what is. Get your kicks on Route 66. And not only that, the song was famous in the 40s. In the 60s, a television program came on. 1960 ran from 1960 through 1964, and it was called Route 66. And it had all sorts of uh, interesting stories that the characters went on in terms of adventures and the people they met and so forth, all on Route 66. The other interesting thing, and it, it kind of ties into my family tree, so to speak, and we're always talking about family history, but uh, please know my family history and your family history are entwined into the fabric of the history of America, of the United States. And the uh, my family uh, experienced the Dust Bowl. They were in uh, Arkansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. And this was in the 30s. And a lot of them picked up, packed up, and moved to California. And they did so by traveling on Route 66 to escape the Dust Bowl. But, you know, it didn't stop then. I had uh, family members then in the 50s and 60s that migrated from our home state into California. So Route 66 was a very prevalent pathway connecting East and West, but it began to lose, I don't know, favor. Uh, one of the reasons was is in the 50s and 60s, they began building the interstate highway system. And a lot of it overlaid Route 66, but a lot of it bypassed the tourist places on Route 66 and kind of obsoleted it. And so a lot of those famous tourist stops that people would go to uh, kind of just evaporated because there was no business. So is there silver on Route 66? Yes, we're finally getting to the point of the episode. If we go to the camera now on the desk, let me stop my share. You'll see that my bucket list is to travel from Chicago all the way into Santa Monica, California on Route 66. I wonder, did the, if you do that, does that take away from the, the emotional connection once you've achieved something on your, your uh, bucket list? Who knows? But here is what I wanted to show you. These are beautiful silver ounces. And I don't have all of them here to show you. Uh, part of them are, are put away. I believe I have the complete set. But on one side, you have Route 66. And on the other side, you have the tourist attractions. There's the St. Louis Arch. There's the Gemini Giant in Illinois. You can travel down Route 66, or you could at the time, and visit all these individual tourist places. And, uh, you know, you don't really get a good look of how beautiful this is. Let me see if I can take it out of the, well, I'll put that one back. And I will go and pull this one. Up. Look at the beautiful patina on it. It's got, uh, it, you know, you, you think it may have a matte finish, but it really doesn't. It's, it's, it's got a high gloss finish, and I'm not sure why it looks like it has a matte finish on the uh, item itself. And look, it says one troy ounce, 0.999 fine silver, Route 66, a piece of America frozen in silver. Isn't that gorgeous? And then on the back, you have the Gateway Arch in, in uh, Missouri. It's the gateway to the West, right? So I, I don't know. Um, when you stack silver, I know we all try to get the I don't want to say the cheapest, but the, but the most cost-effective silver that we can buy so we can get the maximum number of ounces. But I, I'm here to tell you, sometimes you've, you've got to just pick up a few of these pieces because they connect with you. They're beautiful. And sometimes the price is right. Uh, I was thinking about 
what I paid for this uh, back, and I bought it probably about four years ago, maybe something like that, maybe five years ago, uh, from Burleson Gold and Silver down in Burleson, Texas. And if you go in there and see Larry or Corey, tell them that Ron said hi on Empire Coins and Collectibles. But in any case, uh, I paid about, I believe, 25 to $27 an ounce for this. So by today's standard, I paid a little premium. But uh, you can buy one of these on eBay today. A recent sales is $49.97. So in effect, these pieces go up in value because of the collector's interest. The collector's interest pretty much is stacked on top of the intrinsic value of the piece, the silver content. And as the collector interest goes up, so does the price for the item. So this went from being about $25 to $27 what I paid for it to now you can sell them with the recent comps, um, the 25th of October, $49.95. Seven cents. Now, some of these pieces probably will be worth more than others. Um, I, for some reason, I know the Gemini Giant is uh, important to some people because it is. Okay, I'm going to try to open this one without tearing everything up. But I know it's important to some people because it has emotional connections to their to their childhood and their family trips. But I I, I wasn't so much familiar with it. So let me put my gloves back on and then hopefully Miss Empire can do wonders and not make this uh, too long for me because I do babble on. But if you look at this right here, isn't that gorgeous? Now you can see that mirror finish on it. Come on, get in focus. There it is. The Illinois Gemini Giant. It's just very beautiful. That mirror finish in the background and the frosted look of the Gemini Giant. And then there's the Route 66. I don't know. I mean, I'm enamored with things like this. And sometimes I have to fight myself when I go into the gold and silver shop or the coin shop. Do I want to maximize my number of ounces or do I want to split it and buy uh, the cheapest silver ounces I can get and get a few of these along the way? What do you think? In any case, I think we're about done here. You take care of yourself. And if you're not out there looking on Route 66, you're not finding. All the best. Thank you.